Hi everyone, I'm Liberty Doll, and today I'd like to dispel that famous gun control myth that women's reproduction is more regulated than guns. One part of this myth that's been brought back to life after the Supreme Court's Hobby Lobby decision is that birth control is somehow harder to get than a gun. So let's take a look. This is birth control. This is a handgun. So what's the difference between getting this and this? Now for anyone in my audience who has never found themselves on the grand and difficult journey to obtaining birth control, it's actually pretty simple. To obtain birth control, you make an appointment with your OBGYN or your primary care doctor that Obamacare now requires everyone to have, and you say, gee doc, you know what? I think I want to go on birth control. And then your doctor may or may not hand you a packet of information and say, here, try this. And then you go down to your local pharmacy and you give your name and then they present you with birth control. And then that's the end of your magical journey to getting birth control. That's it. There's that, that's all there is to it. There's, there's nothing else. That's, that's really, yeah, that's it. Now getting this was a little bit different. Because I live in a state that requires a license in order to purchase a firearm, I had to go through a very lengthy process. That process included taking a safety course, filling out an application and sending it to my local police department with a check for $100, an interview with the police, a federal background check, and fingerprinting. Then I still had to wait for my license. Once it finally came in, I had to go to all of my local gun shops and then try to find this, which was very difficult to find and was for some time not even allowed to be sold in this state. Once I finally found one, I had to fork up $800, about, um, do another background check, and then finally, it was mine! Yay! Anyone who lives in a state that doesn't require a license might have a little bit of an easier time. Um, they don't have to go through that whole big process that I did, but they still have to go through a federal background check and prove they're not a criminal before they can purchase a gun. Last time I checked, doctors weren't doing background checks before they were giving birth control. But maybe that's just me. Here's something else to consider. The process for purchasing this is the same as the process for purchasing this. For anyone unfamiliar, this is an AR-15. Specifically, it is a Smith & Wesson MNP Sport. And because it's big and black and scary, it's an assault rifle. And that brings us to the next part of the myth, where people claim that reproduction is more regulated than assault rifles. People who claim this have probably never been to California, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Maryland, New Jersey, or pretty much any place else that regulates assault rifles. Um, they also might not have been around between 1994 and 2004 when there was a federal assault weapons ban. So what is an assault rifle? An assault rifle is basically a big black and scary gun if it has a pistol grip on it, then it cannot have a telescoping stock, a bayonet mount, a threaded barrel or flash suppressor, or a grenade launcher. Another part of any assault weapons ban is a limit to 10 round magazines. Um, some states do allow 30 round magazines, provided that your magazine was built before 1994. Now, I've done some research and so far I haven't found any reproductive equivalent of any of those regulations. Um, as far as I know, no one has actually ever said, well, no one needs more than 10 tampons, or you can't have more than 10 birth control pills, unless they're expired, or even better, I've certainly never heard, you have more than 10 eggs in your ovaries, you're a terrorist. If you're still not convinced, I've included a list of other gun regulations in the description. Please, um, 
Subscribe and share, check out my Facebook, and you can find my blog at thelibertydoll.com. Thanks for watching!